believe and succeed. See it, and you can make it happen. That's what we're being taught. We're being taught that if you can just see it, you can make it happen. It feels good, doesn't it? It feels good to think that it puts success just right on our fingertips. And that might be close to the narrative that you'd expect to hear from an Olympic champion, that if you can see it and you believe it, you can achieve it. But that's not what I'm here to tell you today. What I'm here to tell you today is that my success and my energy, a lot of people around me, has come because I wake up every day with a problem. And that success and innovation come from spending the rest of the day trying to figure out how to solve that problem and going to bed at night with the satisfaction of knowing you've done just one thing to try to fix that current problem. I'm going to talk to you today about golf, about my Olympic experience, and an education program that my sister and I founded that all kind of focus around how we as humans do better when we try to look at problems. It's how we're built. It's how we're, it's how we're made. We are loss averse, fight or flight, procrastinate to the last minute to get anything done animals, and it's time we go back to that and start to appreciate it. From the dawn of our time on this planet to the moment that we're born, we learn fight or flight. We learn react and act. It's the reason why a stack of books, the biggest cup of coffee we could find, is how most of us got here. It's also the reason why Derek Sivers' amazing TED Talk, that, that really good talk, tell somebody our goals and we talk to them about what we're going to do, actually makes it less likely for those goals to happen. It's the reason why that video's got over 2 million views already. Right? We are loss averse, which means that we would rather avoid losses than try to do something to gain wins. Avoiding those losses is more powerful for us. Well, researchers did something pretty cool. They, they took a look at over 2.5 million putts on the PGA Tour, and they wanted to see whether golfers perform differently, whether putting for a birdie or a par, when everything else is the, the same, when you're talking about distance to the hole and time on the green, all these things else. Just the physical putt was the same and how they would do. And what they found was over 2.5 million putts that golfers actually made their birdie putts 2% less often than their par putts when everything else was equal. Which is interesting considering par is a completely random number assigned to a hole and they should be looking at their score for the whole, for the whole round. But that 2% cost them a stroke per round. It actually cost them a stroke over a stroke per round. We'll round down for a stroke per tournament, I'm sorry. But that stroke per tournament for the top 20 golfers cost them over $640,000. And the question is why, right? Why does that happen? Why are they performing differently in those different situations, in these different scenarios? Well, think about it. Think about the psychology behind it. We make a birdie, we save a par. Which one is us trying to solve a problem? Which one is us going back to that route of how we get places and how we get things done? Saving par is us trying to fix something. I mean, a sports psychologist, if you can just get into the head of a golfer and convince him he's saving birdie and not making birdie, there's probably, a lot of, probably some good money to be made there. From problems also come solutions. And by the way, Tiger Woods and the best, the top echelon, all fell prey to loss aversion. And from my personal standpoint, there's a mean, lean, non-smiling in college for me, back in the University of Florida as a track athlete. That's about as smiley as I got back then. I wanted to be, I was a track athlete and I wanted to be a bobsledder. But I had some problems to address. All right, I wasn't big enough, I wasn't strong enough, and I couldn't stay healthy to save my life. Those were problems that I had to address. So this is a look at what my average day looked like as a bobsledder. This is how we solve problems. Size, taken care of, eaten eight times a day. It seems, it seems like it'd be great, doesn't it? But try, go ahead and try it for six months at a time and we'll see how you feel. Strength problem, two training sessions a day, doing things right, getting to the gym, working hard, making sure that everything was taken care of. Health problem, therapy session in the evening, having the right people around me. From problems come solutions, come success. And for me, that turned into a pretty, good, a pretty good day. From problems come success, but also from problems, we gain innovation. Now let's take a completely different scenario. How can you find a problem with this, right? This is what Olympians do. We talk to kids, we pass our knowledge down, we make sure the next generation understands how hard it was for us to get there. But I felt towards the end of my career that there was a problem with this. And the problems had to do with, well, first of all, I'd go into a school, I'd give a talk, kind of like today, and I'd never see the kids again. I'd never see them again. And from a marketing aspect, we know that as human beings, we need to hear something seven times in order to digest it. I was going in there one time, and they were never seeing me again. From an impact standpoint, how was I going to know? You know 
a lot of us who have worked with kids, we walk out of a school and we think, you know what, if one or two kids listened, it was worth my time. If one or two kids listened. How do you know, though? How do you know? And at the same time, how, you know, what's, the, what's the mechanism to find that out from an athlete standpoint? Intrinsically, I really wanted to know if I was making an impact. And lastly, relationship. The world today is about relationships. Kids see it. They're aware of Facebook. They're aware of Twitter, whether they're over 13 years old and can hop on there or not. They know it's there. They want to be part of it. They want to have a voice. So what we did is my sister, who's got her PhD in education and social policy, and I, we decided we were going to do something different. We were going to innovate. So we've gathered a whole group of Olympians and Paralympians from across North America and across the world. And every month, the athletes that are part of the program, they send video messages to their kids. They use technology to solve that frequency problem. This is Meryl Davis and Charlie White, who are Olympic silver medalists from Vancouver in figure skating and ice dancing. And you see right here, they've got, they, they teach things like goal setting and perseverance and community. And right here, they've got a steps to success for setting goals. Frequency problem solved using technology. From problems come innovation. The next problem, impact. How are you going to impact? How are you going to know, know as an athlete whether you're, you're solving that problem or not? Well, here's a kid from Philadelphia who's showing Marilyn Charlie how he makes goals and how he sets them using steps of success. There's a kid in South Dakota who's showing Emily Cook, one of his Olympian mentor, that he can make friends on Facebook just like her, but using a piece of paper and a lesson plan that his teacher created. From problems come solutions and the athletes get to see it, and we can share that. And lastly, the relationship problem. We've gone ahead and partnered with Skype in the classroom, and now we've got hundreds of classrooms across the country and across North America and across the world Skyping with each other, Skyping with their Olympian and Paralympian mentors, and learning from them and being part of the conversation, having a voice. Relationship solved using technology. I'm here today to tell you, to implore to you, stop looking at problems in the way that we used to stop trying to rewire ourselves into something that we're seeing and hearing. Our problems are our way, their problems are our way to get to success and innovation. So whether you're a caveman, a college student, a professional golfer, an Olympian, or somebody who really, really wants to make an impact on their lives and those around them, flip the switch, stop trying to rewire yourself. Tomorrow, wake up with a problem and just try to solve it. Thank you.